What's up, everybody? How's everyone doing? This is the Pop Culture Junkie here to give you my predictions for this weekend's WWE Extreme Rules 2018 pay-per-view, uh, available on pay-per-view and the WWE Network, of course. Extreme Rules is, of course, the one time of year that the WWE goes extreme. It's been advertised as their Demolition Derby pay-per-view. It's where all mayhem happens. Every kind of mayhem happens of possibilities. Except this year we're getting about 50% of that, right? Because they've announced 11 matches for this show. We've got 7 championship matches of that 11. And out of those, we've got 5 matches of the entire show that actually have a somewhat stipulation that applies to Extreme Rules, okay? That's just bizarre, okay? You have a pay-per-view called Extreme Rules, which really, it came from what? From your uh, rebirth of ECW you did in the late 2000s, where you tried to reboot ECW as its own brand, and they added that gimmick with ECW's weekly show, where they did once a week, they had one match that was, quote, Extreme Rules, remember? ECW, of course, there were no rules, okay? The matches were just everything goes, anything happens, whatever. But WWE, of course, they just they have to do things a different way. They have to do it their own way, which is never as good as the original, of course. And that's where Extreme Rules came from. Extreme Rules was the gimmick match that they had for once every week on the weekly ECW show. And that was it. That's just where it came from. Now they have the pay-per-view. And the pay review used to be every match is Extreme Rules. Hey, remember back in the day, Night of Champions, every match was a title match. They would put every title on the line, right? They kind of had to do away with Night of Champions because they've had a certain individual holding a title belt for how long now that doesn't show up at almost no shows. Uh, so yeah, you can't have that kind of show anymore where every title is on the line because certain champions aren't going to show up unless they want to. Uh, so anyways, we have an Extreme Rules pay review with, again, only about 50% of the show is actually kind of connected to the title Extreme Rules. I mean, honestly, we have one match on the entire show that is actually a Extreme Rules match. That's it. We have one match, and it's a women's title match, okay? I'm not knocking the women. I'm not knocking the, the equality. Nothing like that. You all know me. I just find it bizarre that you're going to have one Extreme Rules match, and that's it. Okay, they're just bizarre. Of all the different uh, matchups that we have lined up on this show, you could do so much more. But anyways, that's what we're being given. That's what we have to work with. So let's go over the entire card. I'm going to share with you my thoughts, my predictions, and then we're going to go to questions. So starting off, we've got The New Day versus Sanity. Now, Sanity, of course, has had a very weird debut to the SmackDown roster. They, sh uh, they had a ton of promos uh, leading up to their debut. They finally made a debut, and they pretty much lost their first match. Uh, Eric Young lost a surprise U.S. title match against Jeff Hardy, and now they're going into this six-man tag match. Thankfully, it is a tables match. I didn't even realize it was a tables match until I started to research for this video. I mean, it just completely was glossed over on SmackDown. At least I didn't hear it announced, so I'm surprised it's a tables match. Now, Sanity is going against New Day. Of course, everyone knows my feelings on New Day. It's played out. It should have been uh, broken up and, and, uh, and done with over a year ago. Uh, Sanity is the hot new stable on SmackDown. They need some wins, okay? They are a great stable, and I really enjoyed them in NXT. I kid you not, War Games. I still talk about it. War Games last year... Uh, during the uh, Survivor Series weekend, the War Games Takeover show, Sanity was amazing in the War Games match, and these guys have a lot of potential to do a lot of really good things on the main roster. So yes, Sanity, I'm predicting they're going to get the win here. Uh, I'm curious to know: is it just one person that's going to get thrown through a table, or you have to put all three of your opponents through the tables? Okay, let's flash back to Royal Rumble 2000 when you had the Hardy Boys versus the Dudley Boys, one of the greatest tag team matches of all time at Royal Rumble 2000. You had to not only put your opponent through a table, you had to put both opponents through tables, and you had to be the one to put them through a table. It's not like Sheamus winning the WWE title from John Cena where Cena falls off the top rope and lands through the table and, Cena and Sheamus wins. No, you need to put your opponent through the table. I want to see... A bunch of tables getting broken because people are attempting to put someone through a table and they end up going through a table accidentally, whatever. But that doesn't end, okay? You need to put your opponent through a table. I think that's how it should be. But I'm predicting Sanity is going to get the win here and hopefully get some wins. Next up, we got Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens in a steel cage match. Uh, 
of course, Kevin Owens is not going to win this because Braun is the monster. He's the monster in the bank, money in the bank winner, of course. And I, I just it makes me very sad and just shakes my head every time the way they're handling Kevin Owens. I think he is one of their best guys, period. He's over with the crowd. He's a fantastic heel. Just push him, okay? He Let him go. He's got unbelievable unbelievable potential. And I think this is just a watered-down, forced matchup that they put together just to give Braun something to do. But Steel Cage match, uh, I, they haven't announced if it's going to be the standard rules, if it's escape or pinfall or submission, whatever. I'm predicting Braun's going to just... You know, pen Kevin Owens in the cage. Next up, we have Finn Balor versus the Constable of Raw, Baron Corbin. Uh, another one, I just am like, I don't care about this matchup, Baron Corbin. Uh, he's getting a lot of wins all of a sudden on Raw. I think it's weird how he's wrestling in his, as they say, TGI Friday attire, whatever. Finn Balor, okay, d should be in another storyline, not something like this. Sadly, because of the history for the last few weeks with how they've been pushing Baron. I'm going to have to go with Baron Corbin getting the win here over Finn Balor. I just, for whatever reason, Finn Balor is not going to get back up to that level of winning the Universal title, okay? He never got his rematch. Uh, he should have gotten a shot of the title when he came back from injury. But then again, hey, nobody gets rematches from for the Universal title, right? Kevin Owens, he never got his rematch. Goldberg, he never got his rematch. I mean, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> so I'm going with Baron Corbin getting the win here. All right, we got our first championship match here. We got the United States Championship title, Jeff Hardy defending against Shinsuke Nakamura. This is a matchup I'm looking forward to. We were supposed to get it on uh, SmackDown uh, a couple weeks ago, but apparently Shinsuke got attacked by a dog over in, like, uh, Asia somewhere when they were on tour. Um, he's okay now, apparently. But yeah, Jeff Hardy defending the title against Shinsuke. I think at this point, if Shinsuke does not win the U.S. title in this matchup, then just write out your contract and and head back to New Japan or anywhere else because obviously Vince is just not interested in doing anything good with your character. Uh, I mean, he's only a few pinfall losses away from becoming like Santino here, okay? They're just making a mockery and a joke of Shinsuke. Shinsuke was super over in NXT for all the right reasons, just same reasons he was over in New Japan, okay? He is talented in the ring. He can tell a whole lot without ever having to say a word, and I'm tired of them making Shinsuke as well as Asuka talk. They don't need to talk that much, maybe one sentence every once in a blue moon. But Jeff Hardy is, of course, you know, a... A stable of WWE. Uh, I would like to see Shinsuke finally get a win and carry a title belt for a while on the main roster. Uh, I don't feel like they're going to do that though, so I'm, I'm going to have to lean towards Jeff Hardy getting the win and retaining the title. Sadly, this is only a title match and does not have any added stipulation, even though it's at Extreme Rules. And having these two in a match, as much as I just want to see the two of them have a matchup, if it's going to be at Extreme Rules, I think this should be a ladder match. Obviously because of Jeff Hardy's history, but Shinsuke could also do a lot with a ladder match. And it, this way they both save from being pinned or submitted, and instead you're just the one that didn't climb the ladder fast enough to get to the title. So I think that's a stipulation they really should have added in for this. And we have Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley, which will probably main event the show. And once again, why? Because it's Roman Reigns. And you have Bobby Lashley, who I just don't understand why they even brought him back. He was not that over 10 years ago when he when he was wrestling in the uh, ECW, when he was ECW champion and so forth. His biggest claim to fame in WWE was in the mid-card match of WrestleMania when Donald Trump and Vince McMahon did their hair versus hair stipulation and Lashley fought Umaga. And I hate how they keep saying, oh, Bobby, you were you were in the main event of WrestleMania 10 years ago. It's like, no, he wasn't. It was like fourth or fifth match of the card, okay? He wasn't even in the main event. Uh, it was the most hype match because it had Vince McMahon and Donald Trump. And, you know, coincidentally, is now the president. <laughs> it's just, you know, that's why they keep on hyping it, I guess, that way. But... You know, the Bobby Lashley, Roman Reigns, this is just so forced. I can't tell you how annoyed I was this past Monday with the forced uh, brawl they did on Raw. Okay, it was so terrible. There were countless times where Bobby is just standing there waiting for the roster of guys that they sent out there to hold him back. He's like, oh, Roman's away from me. Oh, I'm going to get him. Oh. Oh, hurry up, guys. Hold me back. Hold me back. There we go. I mean, it was just so badly done. You know, Lashley's promos are terrible. Okay, he's not that great on the mic. 
Uh, he just has doesn't have the charisma. Same as Roman. Roman has just horrible. I mean, maybe it's all the dialogue that they're all scripted with because they're both heavily scripted. Either way, these two, it's just not going to work. Now, if they do indeed put this as the last match on the card, which I should not be making it the main event, obviously would not be the smart idea in my opinion. But if they were to go that route, I want the audience to react the same way they did at Backlash when they had Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe as the main event, where the audience just got up and left. My predictions for this, though, I can't see either one of them pinning the other one. I'm guessing it's going to go to some kind of a DQ or count-out finish where they just completely keep brawling into the audience or to the backstage, maybe into the backstage arena area where they do some kind of other you know, gimmick of some sort. Uh, but yeah, I don't see a winner here. It's going to be a draw, DQ, count out, something like that. Next up, we have a 30-minute Iron Man matchup for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. Dolph Ziggler defending against Seth Rollins. Naturally, this has the potential of being the match of the night. You got two guys that can go in the ring. They're both talented on the mic. They have a good story going right now. Seth Rollins, of course, he is the face of Raw. Okay, He's the top dog on Raw. Uh, whereas AJ Styles is your top guy on SmackDown, Seth Rollins is your top guy. Intercontinental Championship title, of course, you know one of my favorite belts of all time, and this could be a lot of fun. It's going to be an Iron Man match, thirty minutes. So whoever gets the most pinfalls or submissions, or hello, also if you get DQ'd or counted out, those also count against you as well. Uh, still, I mean, one of the greatest Iron Man matches of all time is from SmackDown. You had Brock Lesnar against Kurt Angle, one of my favorite matches right there. Now, who's going to win? Who's going to win? So we just had the stipulation added where Drew McIntyre is allowed at ringside because uh, of the matchup on Raw where uh, Drew won the right to be able to be at ringside. So I'm going to go with Dolph Ziggler. I think they need to keep him with the title and let him continue defending that title. Maybe get into a different storyline with somebody else. Because hopefully Seth Rollins is going to challenge Lesnar eventually. Next up, we have the SmackDown Tag Team title match of the Bludgeon Brothers versus the newly reunited team, Hell No, Dan Bryan and Kane. Team Hell No is going to definitely get the win here and win the titles. I think it's going to end up being uh, Team Hell No will win the titles on Sunday. They'll have a rematch on SmackDown and retain lead into some other feud with somebody, and then eventually Kane is going to turn on Daniel, leading into a one-on-one -on -one match for maybe SummerSlam or maybe even into the fall. But Bludgeon Brothers, sadly, they just haven't done much with them, so Team Hell No is going to get the win here. Next up, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship title match, Asuka versus the champion Carmella, and added stipulation they just added on this week's uh, edition of SmackDown is James Ellsworth will be suspended above the ring in a shark cage, to prevent him, hopefully, from interfering. They really love these shark cages. Okay, I was at the Royal Rumble uh, a year and a half ago at uh, in San Antonio where it was Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns, and they put Jericho in a shark cage above the ring. It's unique. It's, it's cool to see. It's different, I guess. Uh, I remember back in the day, they used this a lot in, like, the AWA or the old territories. You know, they did this gimmick. Uh, where they'd suspend somebody above the ring. I remember back in the Attitude Era, they, they put uh, China in the uh, shark cage above the ring. And it's it's cool, it's unique, but I mean, I don't see why this is considered a Extreme Rules matchup, okay? Just have Ellsworth up there in the thing. Now, of course, everyone's expecting Asuka to finally get the victory here, but I mean, really, are they going to give her the title? Both Royal Rumble winners, Asuka and Shinsuke, what have they done with them ever since they both won the Rumble this year? Okay, they both lost at Mania. They have both lost multiple matches. Asuka, her, her undefeated streak has just been completely forgotten. It makes no sense to me whatsoever what they've done with Asuka, okay? She came in as a badass, and again, she can do more with her actions without needing any words, okay? She's such an intimidating visual right away, so I just it frustrates me. When I was such a huge fan of everything they did with her in NXT, and then I was so worried about her going to the main roster, and it, it happened, of course. They just completely blew it again. They do it every time. Anybody that's super over and is very good in NXT, when they bring it to the main roster, it's almost like, hmm, that may have worked down there, but this is the big time, so we got to change it all up because it's not going to work here. No, it will work. It will work. Everything that they do in NXT... Put it on the main roster, it will work, okay? They've done this with Asuka, Shinsuke, Bobby Roode, Kevin Owens. I mean, so many people from NXT, they have 
w just watered down and killed their momentum just so that they can build it back up and be like, ah, we did it our way in on the main roster. It's like, whatever, dude. Okay, whatever. All right, Carmella versus Asuka. Carmella, of course, has only been winning and keeping the title every time because some kind of interference or DQ or count out, whatever. So obviously they had to put Ellsworth in the shark cage. Well, I'm going to go with Carmella because I just don't see any way to win with Asuka. So I'm going with Carmella. I hope I'm completely wrong, and I hope Asuka finally gets the title and gets a solid run. Does not lose it just two days later on SmackDown. So we're going with Carmella there. All right, next up we have the WWE Raw Tag Team title match. Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt versus the B-Team. B-Team has been getting a lot of wins here, but I'm going to go with Bray and Matt Hardy. I don't think they're going to give the B-Team the titles, so I'm going to go with Bray and Matt. Then we have the WWE Raw Women's Championship Extreme Rules match. That's right, the only Extreme Rules match on the card called Extreme Rule. Alexa Bliss defending against Nia Jax, and also there will be Ronda Rousey at ringside watching closely. So obviously it's an Extreme Rules match, anything can go, anything can happen, weapons are allowed, you know, we saw them use a kendo stick on Raw, we'll see if they do anything more. I hope they really do go balls to the wall here, because if it's the only match on the card called Extreme Rules, and it's got that stipulation, then you need to go all out. There needs to be tables. There needs to be chairs. There needs to be kendo sticks, trash cans. Uh, there needs to be somebody going through a table. There needs to be some kind of actual demolition derby experience feeling. How much are they willing to do? I don't know, okay? Uh, Nia Jax seems willing to do some more of the hardcore stuff. Alexa Bliss, I don't know. She's gone through a table once already when Ronda Rousey put her through it, which only means that there's the possibility that Ronda Rousey is going to interfere in the match. She's going to jump the barricade and do something, you know, maybe to either cost Alexa the title or to help, you know, Nia do this, whatever. Who knows? There's always the possibility of Natalia interfering as well. I just was not a fan of Nia Jax as champion. I don't think she did a very great job of being a champion. I'm glad she won the title. But I am a fan of Alexa Bliss, and I'm glad she got the title back again. I'm going with Alexa Bliss retaining the title. All right, finally, main event match. We've got the WWE Championship title, the main title, which should be the main event match. AJ Styles defending against Rusev. Really happy to see Rusev get a title shot. Hopefully it is the main event of the night. That'll be the last match of the night. Uh, but I don't want to see AJ Styles lose that title. Okay, AJ's on an extreme run. Finally, he should have never lost the title back at, at the uh, Rumble last year. Uh, I think he should have still been champion all the way to now, okay? I'm glad he's a two-time champ, but he should have never lost the title to begin with. So I'm going with AJ Styles, retaining the title. That's my pick. All right, there we have it. Those are my predictions for Extreme Rules. Let's go on to questions. That's right. The reason I say questions, uh, every time I'm about to post a prediction or recap on a WWE pay-per-view network show, I send a tweet out letting everyone know to send me any questions or topics to discuss, and you get a shout-out on the video. So if you want to follow along with me on Twitter, PopCultureJunk2 is the tag. Follow along with me and uh, make sure you keep an eye out. Send a question in whenever I do these videos and you will get a shout out on the video. All right, Josh Floberg, which match on the card would you have given the Extreme Rules stipulation to? Well, if they're only going to do one Extreme Rules match per show, then honestly it needs to be either the one that's got the most heat going in or it needs to be the main match. And the main match, of course, should be the WWE Championship. So give it to AJ Styles and Rusev, okay? They could both put on a great show with an Extreme Rules stipulation. But if it's going to be the one with the most heat going in, well, the way they've pushed it, it needs to be Roman Reigns against Bobby Lashley because that's the one that's getting the most TV time on Raw. And it just had the, you know, crazy, you know, wild brawl on Raw. Then that one needs to have a stipulation of Extreme Rules, obviously, right? Samantha S. asks, do you think that any big returns can happen at Extreme Rules? I know there's a big rumor going around that there's a possibility of Brock Lesnar showing up to interfere with the Roman Reigns and Lashley segment or match. But I don't really see that happening. So, no, I don't see any returns happening at Extreme Rules. Bryce J. Hall asks, favorite Extreme Rules memory? I guess my two favorite ones would be the uh, 2009. That was the first Extreme Rules show. It was uh, Jeff Hardy versus Edge in a ladder match for the uh, world title. That was a great match. And then my second one would definitely be the Extreme Rules match between John Cena and Brock Lesnar in uh, 2012. Those were two of my favorite matches. Still Blondie asks, if you could change one match... What would it be? I would not have the Roman Reigns Bobby Lashley match at all. I would get that off TV. Period. Uh, if you wanted to change anything else, I would change the stipulations to several of these matches and give each match something. Okay, whether it was a steel cage match, 
we have that already. Cool. Let's have a last man standing. Let's have a false count anywhere match. Let's have a three stages of hell match. Let's add all these stipulations to different ones, okay? Yeah, you do run the risk of going overboard, but again, you have a show called Extreme Rules. We have had a pay-per-view called Hell in a Cell where we've had three Hell in a Cell matches in one evening. We've had Elimination Chamber where we've had two Elimination Chamber matches in the same evening. We've had a Royal Rumble where we've had two Royal Rumbles, okay? Again, if you're going to have these pay-per-views with these titles, you need to follow what they're called and put the matches in there that make sense. So Blondie also asked, do you think Rusev Day will end? No, I don't think it, hashtag Rusev Day will end. I don't think he's going to win the title here. I mean, it's sad that he was basically set to win the title last year uh, whenever he got injured, though, and then they went with Jinder Mahal instead, which, oh, that was a that was horrible. Uh, but, yeah, <laughs> we were stuck with, what, how many Randy Orton versus uh, Mahal matches? Oh, my God, those are horrible. Uh, but do I think that will end? No. He, that gimmick is over. The crowd is super hot for him. I, I'm, I'm hoping that Vince and the company will hold off for as long as possible whenever you know, they decide to have Aiden English interfere and cost Rusev you know, the match of some sort. Heck, that could happen on Sunday where they have Aiden English cost Rusev his title opportunity and you know they end up feuding into the, summer, into the late summertime. I don't want to see that gimmick end because that's been his most over ever since he was a supreme heel. So yeah, I hope that doesn't. Uh, Still Blondie also asked, do you think anyone will come out during the Seth Ziggler match, and if so, will they help or screw Seth? You know what? I want Dean Ambrose to come back, but I can't say I really want him to come back and feud with Seth. We've done it before. You know, it, it wouldn't make sense for him just to show up and do that. Um, I mean, I guess you could have Dean Ambrose come out during that match, and he cost Ziggler the title and helps Seth Rollins, you know, get it back. But Seth Rollins doesn't need the assistance to get a championship title win. Although it would even the playing field because of Drew McIntyre being outside the ring. But as much as I want Dean Ambrose to come back, I want Dean Ambrose to come back and do something completely away and separate from the Shield. I don't want any Shield reunions ever again, actually, okay? The the attempt they did last year, you know, it completely flopped. Yeah, there were injuries and other things, you know, that went wrong with it, especially when they added in Jason Jordan with the mix. It was just, you know, horrible. But I'm just I'm done with the Shield. Okay, I was I was a fan of the Shield, uh, whenever it came out when they started and everything. But I didn't care for the way they broke up the Shield, and I really haven't cared about any way at all that they've focused on pushing the weakest member of the Shield as the as their top choice. That being Roman Reigns. Okay, of the three guys, that's your pick. That's horrible. Okay, Dean and Seth can. Wrestle circles, talk circles, everything around Roman. Okay, just, yeah. Why take your your two other guys that are much stronger and reliable to get, you know, good crowd reactions, to get good matches, and you're like, no, 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 no. We want you to make this guy look better. <laughs> Makes no sense. Uh, yeah, I think if anyone is going to show up, it would be Dean Ambrose. But, again, I'd like to see Rollins just win the title on his own and proceed with another feud with somebody else. Uh, Joshua Halstead says, Raw just had its lowest ratings in history. How just worse can it get before more longtime fans drop off? Hey, they're dropping off like flies. But unfortunately, when the hardcore fans, the ones that have been devoted, the ones like me who've been watching for 30 years nonstop through the good times and bad, okay, ups and downs, through the new generation, through the Attitude Era, through the Ruthless Aggression Era, and so forth and so forth. You know, there's fans out there that still watch to this day. They're devoted no matter what. They're just like me where they also are like, holy cow, this stuff sucks, but I'm still watching it for whatever reason. There's other fans out there, though, that have come and gone. There's a lot of people I know that they got hot on wrestling in the late 90s with the whole Attitude Era because it changed its, you know, a, appeal. You know, it became more edgy and more uh, risque, and that appealed to a different audience. And then once they cleaned it back up after the war, Monday Night Wars was over, they were like, oh, I'm going to go watch other stuff now. The, you know, this is just getting to be baby stuff again. So, yeah, there's fans that are going to be dropping off all the time, but it, unfortunately it just makes room for the ones that want the clean stuff, the want the, the PG era stuff and whatever you want to call it. 
uh, makes room for them to come in and, you know, take their place. Now, will it continue to drop? Obviously, okay, attendance is not anywhere what they say it is. Network subscriptions are not what they say it are. Uh, pay reviews are dropping in, in buy rates and such. Everything's dropping, okay? Now, I'm not saying they're going out of business because I don't think WWE will ever go out of business, but they are not doing anywhere near the numbers that they come off saying, and every year it drops more and more. I can say from experience, I was in attendance at wrestling shows throughout the early to mid-90s into the Attitude Era, okay? I went to a couple of shows, like uh, live shows and Monday Night Raws in the uh, Attitude Era, and I've been to Monday Night Raws in the early 2000s, and I've just recently in the last three, four years, I've been to a couple of pay-reviews, and I've been to some other like live events. And it is crazy how small the audiences are getting in the last few years. When I went to Survivor Series, I was sitting across from the hard camera. So my view is that big empty area around the hard camera, and the uh, nosebleeds were hardly full at all. The lower level, a good quarter of it, empty. And not because they had it tarped off, they just didn't sell any seats to it. Uh, there was a lot of spaces around where my wife and I were sitting in the upper areas, and you could have moved around freely and sat anywhere you wanted, and nobody would have said anything because those people weren't there. There was no tickets sold to those seats. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they were, you know, giving them out. And I think they need to start doing that sometimes to fill up the, the shows, you know, start handing out, you know, a couple hundred tickets out in the parking lot or whatever and just say, hey, you want to see a wrestling show? Come on in. We got to fill this arena. If you watch any of the recent pay reviews, watch the camera tricks they do, okay? There's a lot of tricks that they do in order to cover up the empty areas around the ring. Now, when I went to NXT TakeOver the night before Survivor Series, yeah, it wasn't a sold out show because it's TakeOver. It's not you know, Survivor Series or WrestleMania or Royal Rumble and so forth. There's going to be a smaller audience for, for NXT, but they were pretty crowded, actually, and I think the lower levels were full compared to Survivor Series. That's pretty crazy. So, yeah, I think it's going to continue to get to get worse, and as long as they keep pushing the wrong people, they keep pushing people that the fans don't actually want, and, again, we're in a different era. We're in a different time where you have fans that are going to speak out and be very blunt with what they do and don't like about your product and even though you could say oh we'll just go watch something else no look at that look at all the years people say oh i don't like that this kind of stuff is on this show or this other kind of show and people always say oh just turn the channel well people don't do that sometimes i think that's how it should be if you don't like what you see you should change the channel but it's also hard when you realize that you're comparing, well, I don't like the type of stuff that's on here, and then I don't like the quality of this stuff on here. And that's the problem right now, is a lot of people don't like the quality of what WWE is putting out on their main shows, with their main wrestlers especially, because primarily, we know it can be good. We know it can be awesome, okay? There's been amazing moments in wrestling in WWE history and other companies as well, but we know that WWE can be amazing and awesome, and we know that they have the talent. They've got some of the most amazing talent right now compared to other years that are unheard of. And it's it just it boggles the mind of everyone uh, why and what they're doing with the what they have to work with. It's like you have gold and you're still not sure what to do with it. It's like just listen to the fans. Vince always says in interviews, oh, we listen to the fans. And some people that have worked with him, you know, the yes men usually are on interviews saying, oh yeah, he listens, he listens. Oh, well show us because it doesn't, it's not obvious to us apparently uh, from what we see every Monday, Tuesday night. So, you know, where is he listening to us? <laughs> All right, guys and gals. Well, I went on a little rant there and I, I apologize for anyone that tuned out, but that's just my feelings on the uh, current product. I love wrestling. I love the WWF. I've been a fan forever. I'm going to keep watching until the day I die. But I, like many, I know it can be better than what they give me right now. And so I'm just patiently waiting for it to be better. And hey, maybe that's why I tune in every week anyways to the shows. Because who knows? You know, they surprise us sometimes with a little bit of something that we didn't expect. And you're like, whoa, they actually made it really good this week. 
Next week will suck, probably, but hey, we never know what might happen. It's, a, it's like a game of anticipation. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much, everyone out there, for sending in your questions. Remember, if you would like to send in a question for my future predictions or recap videos, just follow me on Twitter. I'll be posting whenever I'll be recording the next video, and you can uh, send in your questions or topics for me to discuss or rant and vent about as well, and you'll get a shout-out on the video. All right, well, hey, everyone out there, I appreciate you tuning in for this. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you will enjoy the show this weekend. If you do follow along with me on Twitter already, please check in with me on Sunday because I'll be live tweeting during the show as always. If you've uh, never checked me out on Twitter before, PopCultureJunk2 is my handle. You can check me out there. I'll be live tweeting throughout the entire show, sharing with you my opinions and thoughts on everything we're watching. And I will be posting my recap on Extreme Rules Sunday evening right after the show. So stay tuned for that. Thanks, guys and gals. See you next time. This is the Pop Culture Junkie, signing out.